Y'all know what it is, but um, my, my shirt speaks it more eloquently than I ever could. I am going to share with you today on this uh, recast of Chala or else uh, video, the loves of T'Challa. Let's be real, be real. Hey y'all, what's happening? It's your man D-Real. Welcome to another Be Real with D-Real, um, where today it is still recast to child or else. Shouts out to my man Theo B over at I Ain't Saying, I'm just saying, setting off this thing. Let me know when all of the content providers are going to get together and have one big old shindig. I'm ready for that one. I'm looking forward to that. But anyway, here's what I come to tell you about. A lot of people, you know, tell me about, wow, you have an exhaustive knowledge of the Black Panther. Eh, I'm learning I have a pretty good knowledge. Uh, exhaustive, debatable. Um, I stay up. But anyway, usually when the question is asked, a lot of times it's asked to me, um, has the child ever been involved with anybody else other than Storm. Well, I can't tell you about Storm without telling you about the rest. So um, let's just start off uh, with, 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 with the most delusional <laughs> women who have, to have ever been into Chala's life. That would be one Princess Zonda. Whew. What can I say about Princess Zonda? Princess Zonda is the ruler of the fictitious nation of Nairobi in Africa. Um, she doesn't ha really have any superpowers to speak of, and her claim to fame is, is belonging to a group of people known as the Collectors. Princess Zonda made her first appearance in Black Panther number one by Jack Kirby, all the way back in 1977. She originally teamed up with uh, T'Challa and a little person named Mr. Little, <laughs> that still trips me out, to find King Solomon's frogs. They were time-traveling, time-displacing devices. Uh, and eventually she betrayed them and tried to imprison them and keep them in uh, Nairobi. And at one point said she was going to marry the child. Um, we never heard anything else of significance anyway about Princess Zonda until the wedding of Aurora and T'Challa. And for some reason, she felt slighted, incensed by this. I don't know why, because T'Challa ain't never hit it. T'Challa ain't never talked about hitting it. So... Yeah, all I can chalk that up to is her being delusional. Um, and Storm ends up confronting her, you know, because she's going around shopping and she's telling everybody, oh, yeah, T'Challa's my man, girl, and so on and so forth. And um, Storm got tired of hearing it and, 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 and brought the funk to her. in a major way. Um, currently, as far as I know, Zonda is sitting somewhere, probably in Nairobi, being uh, delusional. Side note, um, Zonda is wanted in about 15 countries for crimes. So, yeah, probably not the Marian type. Um, next love in T'Challa's life would be Nakia. Now, let me set y'all straight about Nakia, okay? Y'all see Nakia in the Black Panther movie, and you go, oh, Nakia is his love interest, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Mm, not this Nakia. <laughs> this Nakia got issues, okay? Um, she made her appearance in the Christopher Priest run of Black Panther in volume three. 
back in 1998. She is a former uh, Dora Milaje who was deposed because of her actions. Uh, she attempted to kill somebody who T'Challa did not want killed, uh, his girlfriend at the time, and we'll talk about her later. Um, and so she was expelled from the Dora Milaje. Um, she later went through a rough patch of problems and got beat up and tortured and, and was found by Killmonger. And Killmonger put her on the altar of resurrection, which gave her, you know, superhuman strength and agility. And for some strange reason, unerring accuracy with her aim and, and, and dubbed her Malice. And she went and found an herb called the, uh, the Jijiro herb. And when she ingests this herb, it gives her the power to make men fall hopelessly in love with her like she is hopelessly in love with T'Challa. Um, she has been back and forth in a couple different adventures and, 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 and done some things that she probably did not have any business doing. <laughs> um, but she is not the love of T'Challa. She was unnaturally obsessed with T'Challa, but T'Challa's not in love with her. Just like Princess Zonda, who we talked about earlier, you know, when you, when you're the king of the most technologically advanced nation on earth, women are going to want to get at you. Women of all nationalities. Now, let me get this on out the way so that, you know, I know y'all might feel some kind of way about it. You might feel some kind of way about it. You might feel some kind of way about it. But let's just get it out of the way. Um, T'Challa dated a white woman. Briefly, yes. T'Challa briefly dated a white woman. Her name was Nikki Adams. Nikki Adams made her debut in Avengers number 77 all the way back in 1970. Nikki Adams was a woman that T'Challa met when he was studying abroad as a teenager. Um, and he had a little, you know, a little brief affair with her. You know, you know how college is. Um, and a gang of brothers didn't approve of it when they seen him on the campus with her and, and they got into it. Of course, even back then, T'Challa was nice with them things and dusted these guys off. Um, this kind of led him to just be like, well, maybe I shouldn't be dating her. And, and he broke it off. Later on, Nikki went on to work at the, at the State Department and became the supervisor of one Everett K. Ross. Yes, and then they proceeded to have a romance. Nikki didn't tell Ross about her little tryst with T'Challa back in the day, and that kind of pissed him off. Now, later on, Nikki ends up getting killed by Malice trying to kill T'Challa's other girlfriend, who I will get to. I promise. But uh, Nikki's last appearance was in Black Panther number 24, where she met her demise. Hmm, so sorry, Nikki. That's how it goes when you're messing with African superheroes. Um, but the woman who has had T'Challa's heart, in my opinion, the most intensely and the longest would be Monica Lent. Yeah, y'all need to read up on Monica Land. Monica Land made her debut in the Marvel Universe in Avengers number 73 back in 1970. Monica Land was a singer that uh, T'Challa ended up rescuing from the Sons of the Serpent. And then they went on to have a, a romance and, and she romanced and hung out with him for a while. T'Challa went to, to Georgia with Monica Lynn to meet her parents and, and hung out. And, you know, he was doing, you know, normal, normal, typical stuff like going shopping. You know, they at the grocery store. How cool would 
that be? To see T'Challa in the grocery store shopping. Hilarious. Okay. Um, eventually, T'Challa has kind of an on-again, off-again relationship with Monica throughout the 70s and 80s, and then eventually ends up breaking it off with her. And then that's when it comes to like, oh, wait a minute, he was seeing Aurora even further back than Monica before he was the Black Panther. So I feel like, yeah, Aurora is his true love, but Monica was like his first true, true love, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Also, um, later on during the, I believe it was the Christopher Priest run, um, Monica Lynn had contracted cancer and she ended up passing in a Black Panther annual number one. Um, he went and seen her one last time, you know, because he knew, okay, she was getting ready to kick off. So in between being single and before him and Aurora linked back up again, he got together with, with Monica Lynn and they had one last little, you know, um, and that was that. Uh, and of course, we all know about, you know, his current love, the current lady of his life, Miss Aurora, Aurora Monroe, a.k.a. Storm, made her debut in Giant Size X-Men number one all the way back in 1975. It was later on during the uh, during the Chris Claremont run that it was revealed that um, Aurora and T'Challa had, you know, linked up out in the wilderness as teenagers when he was on a walkabout. And she was in her her thieving killing stage. <laughs> yeah, Aurora had a she had a wild side. Um, but yeah, those are the loves of T'Challa. Uh, if I have left out any love that y'all know about that T'Challa had that I didn't cover, I may have missed one, I may have missed two, I may have missed more than one or two. I may have got them all. I don't know. But in the comments below, and as always, man, like, comment, and subscribe to the Be Real with D Real page. This is Recast T'Challa or else boycott Black Panther 2. If you ain't gonna have a T'Challa, in your Black Panther franchise, Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige, and anybody else who agree with them and what they think about the character of T'Challa, y'all can kick rocks too. All right, shots fired. Take it how you want to take it. But, you know, like I said, and like many other people said, like my man Theo B and many others, Okay, y'all don't do this to Batman, y'all don't do this to Superman, y'all don't even do it to, to Iron Man or Captain America. So y'all know, y'all know what it is. You know what it is. Okay. Make it right. Like because like I keep saying in my videos, we're gonna be on your bumper all day every day. This is Be Real with D Real. I will be back with another one. And until then, y'all be good, be good to each other.